So we have to follow up here. Yesterday's vlog, or a day or two ago, I pushed up to the channel under my Battletech playlist, putting this idea that LRM5s, are they worth it? Tactically, okay, they don't do a lot of damage, but they have these opportunities, you know, one, two, and three on the table. And tonnage is very, very interesting and, and maybe building a long-range crit-seeking missile boat. I mean, we, we looked at some of the different ways to utilize an LRM-5 because in Battletech, the idea of damage, damage is paramount. Damage is important. I've got to hit you hard, hit you fast, get you to cross off as many bubbles as you can or fill them in. However, that, that's a vlog in itself. Do you fill in your bubbles or do you X them out? Or do you check them off? But putting that aside, damage is very, very important. So we explored that. And uh, there was a comment, Auto Cannon 2s, absolutely the worthless of the worthless. This idea that if we look at tonnage, the LRM-5 is, is superior in all ways. In damage, in being able to possibly hit, in ammo, just, just everywhere. I mean, Auto Cannon 2... It's not like, all right, it does two points of damage, but it's like a, a small laser or, or some sort of laser where you don't have the offset of ammo. No, you've got low, low minimal damage and also ammo. Now, in putting that out, that's what I wanted to explore. The Auto Cannon 2, worthless or not. Now, we're putting aside machine guns and flamers because it looks like what got me started with this ranking was just pure, pure alpha damage. You know, looking at Intersphere, top of the tech, Auto Cannon 20s. Then we're looking at Clans, no clans yet, right? Auto cannon 20. Then we're looking at PPCs, large lasers, medium lasers, SRM packs, LRM packs, balancing things out by range, um, looking at those analytics, and just walking down the list. I put machine guns and flamers, not only anti-infantry, but, but very, very specialized, kind of almost in their own unique category. So I don't feel like we can go just on damage um, with that. But when we explore the auto cannon 2, two points two points. I mean, is a light mech even scared to get hit by that? So in what circumstances would an autocannon 2 be good? Now, one of my favorite mechs out there, one of my favorite mechs out there is the Blackjack. I regularly play the Blackjack. It has two autocannon 2s. But beyond that, it also, admittedly so, it has, it has abrasive medium lasers. So it has some bite. If it just had the autocannon 2s, then I don't know what would happen from that perspective. But let's look at the first idea of the Auto Cannon 2. It's got range. It's got range. It's got no heat. It's got virtually no, it's, it's just, you just start shooting as soon as you're in range. Now I find the damage is so low. If that Atlas is coming at me, okay, I guess if I know their target, I'm going to shoot at it with the Auto Cannon 2s. Uh, if that medium mech is coming towards me, I'm trying to lay down some fire on a Griffin or maybe a light mech. The Auto Cannon 2 isn't so much a threat. Look, any damage is damage because I might get lucky or I might start softening you up. But given that we play on, most of us play on hex maps, uh, you're going to be advancing. I'm going to be advancing. Am I really going to cause enough damage with those Auto Cannon 2s before we get into medium laser range, before we get into that closer range? Most likely no, probably not. So I find the value with Auto Cannon 2s, the massive range, which offsets with combined arms. If you're playing vehicles, hitting vehicles, being able to hit them, especially if I can get side, although look, you're not really going to give me side, that's going to chew up motive hits. So I find with vehicles transferring, it's not only damage, damage is important, but it's also scoring motive hits immobilizing you, scoring crits, which they're a lot more vulnerable to. That's, that's uh, generally the offset in, in battle value, why they're less, because they're not as resilient as a battle mech. So from that perspective, if I can really reach out and touch you for no heat and massive range and a little bit of damage, that's where the win is. Now, the other place that I see the autocannon too, certainly not in the damage, admittedly, it's not in the damage, and damage is important. You know, we established that anti-air. Now, it's not dedicated anti-air. I'd want something like a partisan or, or perhaps my own anti-air air units, some other air units up there. But in a game that's combined arms where someone might bring minimal air support or they're going to bring some attack helicopters or low battle value stuff, warriors, I love warriors, right? From that perspective, having that range is is nice. There's nothing worse than having something trying to strafe you and 
you're just desperate to swat it out or, or cause a pilot check or something, and you're trying to blast it with lasers and other low-end stuff, and you hit it, maybe you did a little damage, maybe you got lucky and, and took it out, but now you fired like, you know, two and a half lances and, and a tank into one target. And you're like, what the heck? And you've given up a turn or two to destroy this thing for, for what? You know, seven, eight, nine hundred battle value? I mean, that's insane. So having that auto cannon too, to put that fire on, especially on the lower echelon targets, if it's something really heavy, it's not going to destroy it but it could cause some problems. So from that perspective, if I don't want dedicated anti-air, but I want a little something, um, I, I could see the value from that perspective. And then finally, looking at it from the perspective of if we're incorporating the operations manual in Total Warfare, different types of ammunition, different types of autocannon ammunition. That that opens up some different tactica, and that, that kind of allows you to explore things. But that's that's across all auto cannon, um, all the auto cannons, and how they operate. So in exploring that out, worthless, I, I won't say no or yes. I mean, certainly it's less than that LRM five. I think the LRM five is more functional. But for the auto cannon two to work, it's very situational. Ideally, against combined arms vehicles, and you definitely need. And this feeds back to the blackjack, in my opinion. You definitely need that brace of of something of something else, medium lasers, something else to utilize because if your primary is that autocannon too, and, and right now I'm trying to think offhand of some mechs that might have primaries as autocannon twos and nothing else. You don't really see that from that perspective, then you're in trouble. You need that brace, you need that secondary. From that perspective, the blackjack is a model. I think it works pretty well. 